Um, so before we kick off, I want to thank all of you guys here who could make it to this event, and thank you, thanking all of you guys so that you are what makes this event happen. So I want to thank all of you firstly. So now let's deep dive into what you guys can expect over the next two days. We have an incredible lineup of talks, workshops, and discussions all planned for you, where we are going to explore the cutting edge software development, open data initiatives, and much more. So without further ado, I would like to officially kickstart the India Force 3.0. I hope you have a lot of fun with a lot of learning. We'll also be splitting into two tracks. So there's a second auditorium um, where we would also have parallel tracks running. So if uh, you look at the schedule and you have talks which interest you at Auditorium 2, uh, feel free to move to Auditorium 2. So we'll be splitting into two tracks. Now we'll start uh, with the first talk. So our first speaker of the day is building a one-of-a-kind tool to visualize and test formal grammars and automata. He's building a tool that's helping students around India and worldwide to learn uh, formal grammars and automata theory. So I would like to welcome Akash. He's a software engineer at Razorpay and a gardener at home. So please give a huge round of applause for Akash. Thank you for the great introduction. I'm glad this is the first talk, because usually my talks come at the end. <laughs> this is the first time I'm giving the first talk at a conference. So I'll be sharing my journey of building this project called Vyakran and the things I learned along the way. A bit about me, my name is Akash Hamirvasya. I write code at Razorpay, and I do a lot of open source projects outside Razorpay. Uh, every year I publish like two or three open source projects which are geared towards end users or uh, developer libraries. Apart from that, uh, I have a lot of other projects, various talks, which are all listed on my personal website, akashamirvasya.com, or you can also connect with me on Twitter and GitHub. Let me start this journey by actually going back to 2021. 2021, I had this idea of building my own programming language. You don't get this idea every day, right? The reason I got this idea was I had a lot of free time because we were sitting at home. It was still COVID-19 pandemic era. And I was learning this interesting course at my university called Compiler Design. The reason I found this course interesting was it brought in a lot of courses from computer science, like data structures, algorithms, theory of computation, all of these things that are separately thought. But compiler design is what felt like everything merged and uh, actually made sense. So this is when I decided, let me try to build my own programming language. What kind of language should I build? Well, because I'm building my own programming language for the first time, I wanted to build something that was very small in scope. I didn't, I didn't want to build yet another general purpose, high level programming language. It should be small in scope. It should be potentially useful. Um, it should solve some personal pain point that I have, uh, which will motivate me even further to work on it. And something that potentially did not exist. When you try to build something new, it again excites you and motivates you to actually finish it. So after a lot of deliberation, I decided to build a language for making formal languages and automata theory easier for me and fellow students to understand. How many of you know what formal languages and automata theory is? Very few, which is actually good, because that's what my talk is about. So formal languages and automata theory, it's a branch of computer science that deals with abstract state machines, in a way, that can understand a pattern that is defined by your formal language. So this statement still, while I've tried to make it very simple to understand, it's still very hard to grasp just by reading it for the first time. But let me explain it by showing you the real world applications of it. If you have ever used regular expressions, state machines, if you have ever built a React app that uses state, it's a, well, a large state machine at a high level. All of those are real world applications of uh, formal languages and automata theory. Compilers are a big one. Lexers, parsers, everything that goes in building a compiler is also powered by studies that happen in formal languages and automata theory. And it also, it's also used in machine learning and NLP as well. Um, I was reading a paper recently which uh, explored ways of using formal languages to define constraints of a certain system and using, using machine learning to actually optimize uh, on those constraints that are defined. 
So this is about formal languages and automata theory. It's a very, very niche concept. As I just uh, saw, like not a lot of people are very interested in it. So why did I decide to even bother building a language for this? Well, the reason is simple. It's very, very theoretical. The course that was taught to me in my university, the name of that was itself theory in computation. And the entire course was mostly pen and paper based. Now, because it's so theoretical, it's very hard to understand and visualize how certain things like automata and grammars and all these languages really work. And to make it worse, there was no tooling to make it easy easier. Um, to give you an example, when you're learning something like data structures and algorithms, you can implement it using a high-level programming language and see it work. If you're doing something in networking, there are a lot of networking simulation tools. There's Wireshark for packet tracing. If you are learning about operating systems, you have the entire world of Linux uh, for you. But when you're learning formal languages, it's still stuck in pen and paper, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, some tools do exist, and I want to acknowledge them. JFLAP is a very old tool. It looks dated too, but it's very, very powerful. There are other tools. Uh, Gramophone is a big one that I used to use, but it lagged some features. There are, again, countless other small, small tools that focus on some small niche of this entire broad concept. These tools are good, but then some don't have great UI UX. That wasn't even the priority. JFLAP, you, to download it, you have to request the university who made it to give you access. And honestly, as you just saw, it doesn't look that pretty, in my opinion. Some have very limited features, because obviously these are built you know, as side projects. People build one part of the project and then just leave it. And most of them don't even provide a cohesive experience. Looking at all of this, I decided, well, it's time to build my own tool. This is a small niche. I can build something really quickly. It would be useful, because well, I was learning compiler design. I wanted to understand and visualize all of these things. So I, if nobody uses it, well, I'll be using it. It can be extended a lot in the future, because it can start small, but the topic itself is so broad you can build a lot of things around it. And finally, I wanted to learn compiler design. This is something I was finding uh, very fascinating, so I really wanted to dive in and actually build something to learn it. And finally, after months of hard work, a lot of tears, a lot of research papers, a lot of redoing the courses that I had learned, I'm finally excited to present what I was able to build. This is Vyakran. Vyakran is a suite of tools to visualize formal languages and automata right on your browser. It's so simple to use. You just open Vyakran on your browser. You give it the kind of uh, languages that you want to visualize. This is an example of a regular grammar. Don't worry if you don't understand. You click the play button. It can generate the automata that you want from the language that you have specified. You can change the automata type as well, play around with it. It can also generate the associated regular expression that is there. And whatever diagrams that are created by this tool, you can export it and use it in other you know, papers or presentations that you're creating. These are the kind of things, when I was taught in college, I used to do it manually, following certain you know, algorithms using pen and paper. It used to be really long, and that is exactly what this tool automates. You simply specify your grammar, and it can convert that into a variety of automata and uh, regular expressions. It has a simple language at its core. You specify your grammar. This is a context-free grammar. What it, it's what's used to build parsers. This is a very simple grammar for you know, matching math expressions. And this syntax is familiar. This is what you learn in your university textbooks. So very simple to use, straight to the point. You write the grammar. You click the play button. For context-free grammars, it can generate all the parse tables or all the parsing automata. Fancy things. It's fine if you don't understand. Even I don't understand it, but I build it. Now, building and visualizing uh, grammars is one part of the puzzle. The real problem is creating grammars or writing grammars that actually work, that actually work as you expect it to work. And sadly, there are not a lot of tools to test that as well. You write grammar, you think about the edge cases that it might cover, it might not cover. There's not a suite of tools to do that. So that is why I built 
a console in Vyakran which has certain utilities like this. Just by running one command, you can generate an example set of strings that are accepted by your grammar that you have defined. So these are strings that are accepted by the math expression grammar. You can also generate strings that cannot be accepted by your grammar. And this is more important than you think. You want to see the edge cases or the boundaries of your language. And after this, you can also test some specific cases if you have. I want to test this expression. I saw this uh, particular string that I have is not accepted by the grammar that I've written. I can test some other string this was accepted. It can also check if it was accepted ambiguously, which is very important when you're building a compiler. You don't want a single program that you have written to be parsable in two or three ways. It can be confusing for the system. So these utilities is what I hoped would exist when I was learning this subject. And I was finally able to build it and expose it for everyone. Now I've talked a lot about the tool. Let me share how did I go about building it. The primary language I used for building this was TypeScript. Can I get a lot of boos for this? <laughs> Well, see, I'm a front-end developer, and I'm very comfortable with JavaScript and TypeScript. And my goal with this project was to learn compiler design, not fiddle around with languages and try to optimize everything. The tool today, it might have a lot of bugs. It might not be very performant. But hey, I learned a lot. And I think with the state it is, it's helping a lot of students to learn as well. The interactive editor that you saw, it's built with uh, Vue 3. And there is a static website which was built with Svelte. These are technologies, honestly, I was just trying out. Um, I primarily, primarily work with React, but here I wanted to try something different. And Windy CSS was a popular uh, styling library, which is also what I use for styling everything. Now, that is where the first phase of the project ended. 2022 is when the second part of this journey starts. So there is this club in my university called PES Innovation Lab. And, and we try to do this thing every summer where we bring a bunch of students who are passionate about computer science and building things to work on exciting projects. And this is when I had pitched Vyakran as a project so that students can extend it further if they have any ideas. And together with interns, Abhishek, Tarun, Tejas, mentored by Hrishit, and me, I was just there because I had to be. Hrishit is much better than me. Um, we were able to build the next part uh, of this tool, which was simulating Turing machines itself. So the students were able to come up with their own programming language to specify instructions for a Turing machine, run it, see it, execute step by step, generate its associated state diagram, everything, all by themselves. They hadn't even learned compiler design in their university by that time, which is really great. Now, looking back, I want to now share the things that I've learned through this project. The first thing is, it's OK to reinvent the wheel, especially when you want to learn something new for the first time. If you're not familiar with this concept of reinventing the wheel, it's basically you build something that already exists out there. When you propose this in your company, they would try to stop you by saying it's a waste of time and effort. It's a waste of money as well. It has quality issues, because if you build something in haste, it might not be as good of a quality. If uh, compared to the thing that's already available. And honestly, they say it's one of the worst crimes you could do as a software engineer. But I want you to look at it from a different perspective. When you reinvent that tool that already exists, you end up learning more about that tool than people who are using that tool. Because you have gone about the pain of building something like this, you would know why certain things are the way it is. You can potentially find better ways to build the tool. You can increase the performance. You can make the tool much more powerful. You can extend it even more just because you have started building it again. And in general, when you peel a layer of abstraction, you open so many things that are there to explore. I started building Vyakran. I didn't know anything about uh, compiler design and everything. There were already tools that were there in JavaScript to help you build compilers. But with Vyakran, I decided I won't use any of that for building a compiler. I decided to build my own lexer and parser and write complete parse tables, complete algorithms for parsing the strings all by hand. Just because I wanted to go through the same experience people have gone through to build these tool chains that already exist. So rebuilding something is a great way to learn if you're 
you know, thinking if I should really rebuild something that already exists, it's not exciting. Just give it a go. You'll learn a lot just by rebuilding something. The second learning is DSLs are practical and fun to work on. So DSL is a domain-specific language. These are programming languages that are geared towards a very specific domain. And it's used almost daily by programmers and non-programmers both. As programmers, we use a lot of domain-specific languages, um, SQL, CSS, HTML. These are, in a way, domain-specific languages, although they have expanded quite a lot over the recent years. For non-programmers, the thing I can think of is the formulas that you type in spreadsheet applications. Those are DSLs, although they have also expanded a lot in recent years. It can honestly be more powerful than building very complex UIs. And the benefit is you can easily store it somewhere. Because it's a DSL, it's simple string. You can store it on your database. You don't have to think about structures and everything. It's easy to share. It's easy to understand as well. Vyakran has a DSL of its own. And it has helped me build another DSL, which is kind of funny. It's called Lexico. It's a search library that allows you to perform full text search uh, using search operators inspired by Google Search. I can talk a lot about this, but let's do that after this talk. So in a way, Vyakran became a language to design other languages, which is kind of funny. But hey, that's what I did. The third learning is go ahead and build stuff that seem impossible to build. This might seem like a hot take. You know, I can try creating arguments just by using this statement. Because every time we see people encouraging, start small, start small. Don't start with a very big project. But once when you have crossed certain level of confidence, it's much more rewarding to build a project that you think is impossible to build. I find it more fun because I take it as a challenge. If there's something I feel I can't build, it's more fun. Like I want to try to build it so that I can prove this notion wrong. You feel like giving up, but the end is very rewarding. Even if you fail, it makes you a better engineer. Because the point when you fail, you would have already learned so much before you decided to give up. And that itself would make you a better engineer for the future projects. If you succeed, it gives you a lot of confidence to pick up other harder projects. And that is exactly what happened with Vyakran. I did not know anything about compiler design, but I started, went through a lot of tears, a lot of research papers, but I was able to complete it. Finally, I want to say a FOSS project is not just a collection of files. Files in this case can be code, can be issues, can be documentation. FOSS project is not just this. It's usually the emotion attached with the developer. It's the frustration of developers building this. And there is a vision always associated with the project. With Vyakran, my goal was to build a tool to make learning automata theory from languages easier. And this tool that I have is a manifestation of this vision. So there are emotions associated with every FOSS project, and I want to acknowledge and respect this. Now, the thing is, Vyakran is not open source, which is kind of funny. I'm giving the first talk at a FOSS conference, and Vyakran is not open source. Well, the reason is I wanted to publish it as a research paper. Um, and I thought, well, I, I should probably keep it a secret, right? If I reveal it, people might just copy it and do something with it. But the thing is, it's not open source yet. And I realized you can still publish a research paper even if you make something open source. So just to actually um, you know, break this notion, let's actually make it open source on stage. Um, if the internet works. That's the important thing. So let me go on settings. I literally added a readme today morning. Let's go to the danger section, change visibility, change to public. Wait, I'm not deleting it, right? <laughs> yeah, make repository public. It's public now. You can go and check it out at github.com slash blender school slash Vyakran. Let me jump back to my slides, if I can find it. Oh, my speaker notes are over here, which is, uh, let's quickly see. Yeah, so this brings me to the end of the talk. You can check out Vyakran at vyakran.now.sh. It won't work on your phones right now, because the tool, it's a editor, right? So you have to use it in a large screen to actually see how it works and play around with it. 
Um, the GitHub link is also now live. You can go and check it out over there. With that, I want to end this talk. Thank you for listening. I really hope you find this tool useful. You can connect with me on my Twitter, on my GitHub. You can check out my website, and here's my email for, for the communication. Thank you.